Welcome back to another edition of CCS and Sons Workshop. I've been needing a crosscut sled for my table saw for quite a while now, so I've made one, and I'm going to show you the process that I use to do so. Hope this inspires you to do something similar or helps you out with another project. The base of the sled and the two fences, the back and the front fence, are all made from three quarter inch plywood, which you can pick up from any home store. So I started the process by ripping four strips of the plywood, two for the back and two for the front that would be glued together for the fences. The back fence is three inches tall and the front fence is built to be the exact height of the Craig Precision Track and Stop Kit. Once I had the back fence glued up, I took it over to my joiner to make sure I had a perfectly square and flat bottom and top. I wanted to have a quick and easy way of measuring and setting stop blocks, so I got the Craig Precision Track and Stop Kit. In the box, you get four two-foot sections of track as well as tape measures to go on either side of the fence, on either side of the blade, and two different types of stop blocks, a swing stop block and a production stop block. The track system is designed to be screwed directly to the fence of wherever you're going to be using this system, but because of how thick I made my front fence, I had to come up with another method, so what I did was essentially rip a dado down the edge of one of the three quarter inch sheets of plywood and then I would laminate the two together and that would allow me to have a notch that I could insert the track down into and hold it in position. see that notch that I just ripped on the table saw that'll hold the track and how it'll go together with the other sheet of plywood and be glued as one fence. And again, once I had that front fence glued up, I took it over the joiner to get a perfectly flat bottom. Then it was time to cut the actual sled from my sheet of plywood. I added a very small chamfer to one side of the fence, the side that would face towards the cutting material and the saw blade. The idea being that any dust that's on the table would get trapped inside that chamfer rather than blocking the cutting material from being square to the fence. And 
and then it was time to cut the front and back fence to their final sizes. I'll put a link to all the products that I used in the description below, but for the actual runner on the sled, I used another Craig product. It has these built-in adjustment screws uh, in a body of aluminum, so you can get a perfectly snug fit for just about any size miter slot. And then I used a common trick uh, when making these sleds, and that's to put four pennies or four dimes down in the slot first, then place the runner in there and then add some CA glue to the runner. Set your board down on top of the runner with the glue. Let it set and then you'll be set until you can screw it in permanently. I used one inch wood screws to permanently attach the runner to the sled, but I also had to use my countersink bit in order to carve out a countersink on the aluminum bar so that the screws would sit flush or below the surface of the bar and not interfere with the table saw top. On the back fence that didn't house the track system, I wanted to add a round over just to make it a bit easier on the hands. So I used a one half inch round over bit on both the front and back top side of the fence to smooth it out a bit. And right about here, I had my first real fail of this project. I think the round over bit caught a void in the plywood layers and obviously as you can see took a big gouge out of it. Because it's the back fence and it's structural, it doesn't have any bearing on the straightness of my cuts, I ended up just leaving it and filling it with glue that I sanded over later. And then it was time to permanently attach that back fence to the sled. And as I mentioned, because the back fence is for support and structure and not squareness, I don't have to worry about squaring this fence to the saw blade. As I began the process of squaring the front fence to the sled, which does need to be square to the saw blade, I clamped the sled to the table saw top and turned on the saw and raised the blade up through the sled to give me the reference of the saw blade and the cut line, which I could then square the front fence against. I 
first secured the front fence with just two screws, one at either end of the fence with the intention of being able to pivot the fence if necessary to make fine adjustments. But as it turned out, I had it pretty dead on by using just the square method. As you can see here, it's dead on. Then it was time to cut and install the track. So I just simply marked where I needed to cut the aluminum track, took it over to my miter saw and made the cuts. Freshly cut aluminum does leave a bit of a jagged edge, so I just knocked it all down with some sandpaper real quick. And I secured the track into that groove that I made by using some Gorilla construction adhesive. Last stage of the build is to install the tape on both sides of the cut line. I used a woodpecker square that's exactly 12 inches long to set the stop and set the tape width. Once I trimmed both ends of the tape, I found the easiest way to align the tape position was to put the 12 inch mark within the tolerances of the lens on the stop block because the lens is adjustable within a certain degree. Once I got that lined up, I took the adhesive backing off and taped the ruler down. I then put the stop block back in place and adjusted the lens so that the line fell exactly on the 12 inch line. I repeated the exact same process on the other side of the blade using 8 inches rather than 12. And then I set up for a test cut using the 12 inch mark. dead on and it's still square as well the only real lesson learned that I took away from this project was the importance of using good quality plywood you saw that instance where the roundover bit took out a chunk of the plywood from where it hit a void I think on the next round of sleds or jigs that I make I'll use a better quality plywood or MDF Thanks as always for watching CCS and Sons Workshop. We really appreciate it. If you aren't already subscribed, be sure you hit that subscribe button, ring the bell, give us a thumbs up if you think we deserve it, and we'll see you in the next episode. Thanks.